Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. It is Tuesday, July 17th, 2012. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, sitting in for Alex today on this truly monumental day of news that that just stretches your 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 construct of reality. It's it's so amazing. Let me give you a hint of what's coming up here. We've got well, yesterday at the end of the Alex Jones show, we had a caller, Chris from Oklahoma, who began describing his involvement in military gun confiscation of US citizens. Uh, in 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 New Orleans, and he talked about the New Orleans Police Department, the NOPD, involved in some rather heinous crimes, including raping of women and other other things. Uh, that that set off really a, a firestorm of research here at the Infowars studios in Austin, Texas. Last night, Rob Dew then had on Infowars Nightly News a video compilation. Because you see, so many people can't believe this is really happening. They 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 live in denial about the gun confiscation issue and what the military is ordered to do when a crisis occurs in these cities. So Rob Dew and the team put together a video compilation of, of footage, some of it from mainstream news media, showing US military engaged in gun confiscation and doing it rather violently and, and as Chris said during the call, without negotiation. So we're gonna feature that video clip coming up in just a few minutes to show that to you and remove any doubt in your mind that this is the plan. When there's a crisis, when there's a, a, an attack, a natural disaster, a bomb, a dirty bomb, a, a, a release of, let's say, a pandemic bioweapon of some sort, this is what's gonna happen in the US. I have no doubt about that, but that's just the beginning of the show today. We have much more coming up as well, including a an exclusive Worldwide radio first of Blair Hamrick, the whistleblower from GlaxoSmithKline. He and his partner, Greg Thorpe, well, they were colleagues, I should say, ex-employees of GlaxoSmithKline. They initiated the whistleblowing suit involving the Department of Justice turning over evidence to the US government that eventually resulted in the largest settlement and the largest admission of criminal activity in the history of medicine, in the entire history of modern medicine, a $3 billion settlement with the Department of Justice. And he is here on the Alex Jones Show, joins us at 1230 Central with an interview and to take some of your questions and the details that he has ready to share with us will blow your mind. We're talking about bribery of doctors kickbacks from doctors. We're talking about uh, off-label marketing of drugs to children, even though they were never tested for children, never approved for children, all that and much more straight ahead. Also, the FDA has just been caught surveilling the emails of its own employees and scientists. This is a mafia type of surveillance, criminal thug racket type of operation that the FDA has just been caught doing. You know, instead of being transparent, they now have to be big brother to their own employees because they know their own employees are trying to expose the truth and expose the corruption and expose the criminality to the world, just like Dr. David Graham did over the Vioxx issue many years ago. And the FDA is now turning to what could be criminal type of activities to suppress and censor and intimidate their own employees. That's America today. It's not just the government engaged in gun confiscation of private citizens following a natural disaster. It's the FDA itself going after its own employees. Imagine that. We've also got information here, a Paul Joseph Watson article, the UN gun grab follows State Department plan, plus the breaking news coming out of Washington Times that says the law of the sea treaty, that was the UN small arms treaty uh, was, was part of that. This says the law of the sea treaty is now dead. That's called LOST, L-O-S-T is the acronym for that. But, but we know, and you know, if you're a regular listener, that even if Congress is not approving of something, the executive branch of government will bypass Congress and do the UN's bidding anyway. So all of that and much more, including G. Edward Griffin is a guest at the bottom of this hour. All that straight ahead right here on The Alex Jones Show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. Tuesday, July 17th, we are continuing here. This is Mike Adams, the health ranger, sitting in for Alex today. I'm the editor of NashvilleNews.com. You probably know that. And Alex, of course, Infowars.com, where you can find articles on all these topics that we are discussing today. A huge show straight ahead. In fact, there's so much here. We've got military gun confiscation of U.S. citizens. That issue is... Uh, high on the radar right now. We're going to discuss the Law of the Sea Treaty. Reports are that it is now dead because the U.S. Senate will not ratify it at this point. But if the U.N. passes it, could the executive branch, Obama in particular, bypass Congress and go ahead and say that guns should be confiscated from all law-abiding Americans? I'm talking about legal guns, guns that people bought with the FBI background checks, with concealed weapons permits, uh, with ATF approval uh, Form 4 uh, uh, equipment, for example, all legal, but it could all be confiscated. Now, we've got much more coming up, but I want to give a shout out. If uh, there was a caller at the end of the show yesterday, uh, a military, active duty military or former active duty, Chris from Oklahoma called in and he had an astonishing story about gun confiscation in New Orleans. He and his teammates, his his uh, uh, fellow soldiers going in and doing very aggressive kicking in doors, uh, arresting people, taking their guns. I want to ask him to call back in. We're going to open up the phone lines and see if he's listening, want him to call back in, have him back on. Otherwise, if other people who have been in the military and who are involved, who were were involved in gun confiscation drills or actual uh, missions, we would invite them to call in as well. We'll be taking your calls later on in the show. We've got G. Edward Griffin coming up at the bottom of the hour with some additional information in all this realm of global control of the situation. But first, we're going to introduce a video compilation. For those of you who don't believe what we're talking about, that this kind of gun confiscation is actually going on in America, Rob Dew and the InfoWars nightly news crew put together a video compilation that will blow your mind. And this includes some clips from the call yesterday with Chris from Oklahoma, plus some mainstream news footage that actually shows this going on, kicking in doors, screaming at innocent citizens, taking their guns and leaving them wide open to violent crime in their areas hit by natural disasters. We're gonna go to that video clip right now, and then we'll be right back after that. Take a look. Guns will be taken. No one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. Today in New Orleans, they got a lot tougher on the holdouts. Police department in your home! Not only the flooded areas, but New Orleans' driest and wealthiest neighborhoods, too. Police department! The police and National Guard going street by street, house to house. Sometimes entering open houses with guns drawn and instructions to disarm anyone inside. Uh, let's go to Chris in Oklahoma. Chris, you're on the air on the Alex Jones Show. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Hells Ranger. How's it been? It's good. It's good here, man. How about yourself? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, I was with the 45th Infantry Brigade and Delta Company 1st of the 279 uh, 2nd Platoon. Um, during Hurricane Katrina, I'm kind of calling in on yesterday's subject. I'm sorry about that. It's all right. But, uh... I don't, it's just, I've always wanted to get a hold of you guys and kind of get the word out there for those that still have that slight hesitation in the back of their head that gun confiscation can't and won't happen here. It already has. And I was only 21 years old, just really gung-ho, really dedicated to the Army, especially to the infantry. And uh, I did whatever I was told. And, and what, what did they ask you to do? How I, first, let's see, the first thing we did was we got a, a three-week, uh, a book full of three-week-old 911 phone calls, right? And then we had to go around and answering all the phone calls. So we were like cadaver dogs for about three weeks. And in between them, we would run night missions. And here's the thing. A lot of people may think that they'll see this on the news or they'll have time to, to get ready when, you know, when the, when the crap hits the fan or whatever. It's just, it, it's a truck, you know what I mean? It's a group of trucks. They pull up, they stack right on your home, as we did, and we broke entry. Yeah, we would yell out, Oklahoma Army National Guard, is anybody in need of assistance? But that's as we were booting in the door. Oh, wait a minute. It sounds like you weren't part of the Oklahoma National Guard. I mean, you were you were U.S. military. Yeah, I was, uh, I was activated, um, I think, about a week after Katrina. I was, I was watching it on, on, on the news, and Sher Kamiko of Fox 23 told me before my unit even got a hold of me that I was going to New Orleans. 
Wow. So, so, so yeah, we, we got we got sent in, and we were we were the very very first boots on the ground. Alpha Company. And you were uh, confiscating you were confiscating firearms. Left and right, yes. And wow. we were also uh, monitoring the New Orleans police because we kept having like, you know, like the first day we had this little beautiful redheaded lady come up. All right, wait a minute. We, we, we're almost out of time. Will you stay on the line for us, please? I want to continue with you on the other side. Stay on the line with us. This is fascinating. We're going to continue this right here on the Alex Jones Show. We'll be right back. That happened today in this wealthy neighborhood where homeowners had armed themselves to protect their mansions. <laughs> Residents were handcuffed on the ground in the end, police took their weapons but let them stay in their homes. They were a little bit threatened because our weapons were bigger than their weapons. Chris Montgomery says he'd rather be in Iraq than patrolling American neighborhoods. Walking up and down these streets, you don't you don't want to think about the stuff that you're gonna have to do. Somebody pops around the corner. Let me shoot an American. Yeah. We have Chris on the line from Oklahoma relating a story about gun confiscation in New Orleans and, and that entire region following Hurricane Katrina several years ago. And Chris, go go ahead. You were saying, you were describing how you, you and your your, uh, your team were kicking in doors and confiscating firearms from people. Uh, did anybody resist? Did anybody ever shoot back? W what happened? Well, we had, uh, we had a couple of people uh, resist verbally and they got stuffed and cuffed very violently. Uh, we throw them in the back of the, uh, the five ton or the deuce and a half or whatever, and then we take them out to uh, the Greyhound bus station, which was the police station at the time. We, like what I was saying, like before we came up, or before the break, uh, with the, like I think it was like the second day we were there, this redheaded lady came up to our platoon's area, and she sat, or to our company area, she sat on the curb with her knees in her chest, just rocking back and forth, crying uncontrollably. She sat there for almost 27 hours, just refused to move. We, you know, we talked to her, we did everything we could, just didn't want to, you know, you could tell she had been through enough. She'd been repeatedly raped by men in NOPD masks and NOPD uniforms. Oh, you're kidding me. So, oh yeah, so we were told, you know, at that point we were told the NOPD obviously isn't our friend, we need to start watching them. The FBI had us out there at Cooter Brown, which is uh, the NOPD Sheriff's Brothers Bar. It's like the big cop bar there in New Orleans. Just so people know, NOPD is New Orleans Police Department, just, yeah. just for people who know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, or or it's so, the police department. So a, a lot of those cops were then just total total rogue. I mean, we saw a video of some of them going in and looting uh, retail stores and things like that, but they were raping women down there? Definitely raping women. They were. <laughs> uh, we got two, two separate women that came to our company alone. And when I was there, I met cats from the uh, California Guard, Indiana Guard, you name it, everybody was there. And... But how it was, uh, it was just a free for all. Every, police from all over the country, Dallas, Dallas County, Dallas, Texas sheriffs down there. But how how did you and your team justify to yourselves and each other that gun confiscation would help this situation when it was a free for all? I mean, isn't that yeah. a time when citizens need to be able to defend themselves? It never, you know, like I said, I was just ignorant as hell, and that's kind of something that I worry about with the with the kids today. You know, if they really realize what they're doing. You know, I had no idea. The only time it ever occurred to me that something may be wrong is we came up, uh, we were down by uh, the old French district. We came up to this man's house. He had a big wooden sign that says, I'm here alone uh, with my dog and my shotgun. Looters beware. We thought, you know, it's funny. Everyone stopped and took pictures of the sign. But eventually we took his guns. <laughs> and we left him there with nothing. I, You know, um so now that you know what you know, now that you're you're, you're listening to the Alex Jones show and you're you're informed, what would you advise?